When an ancient ruin is academically studied, it will often be attributed as the work of a far more recent, already studied, thus previously permitted group placed within known history, often a group simply incapable of such undertakings. Furthermore, not only do many sites hold evidence of a far older yet far more advanced builder having once been responsible for their construction, but such sites can often share characteristics with ancient ruins found far away, features from a said site also found on another continent on the other side of the globe. False doors, for example, found over countless ancient ruins spanning much of the world. This reoccurrence, along with many other similar signature features, are far from mere coincidence and can only be explained by a past intercontinental, highly capable lost civilization, as we have postulated in the past in regards to many factors indicative of their megalithic legacy. Metal clamps, identified on differing continents, varying in style and composition relative to what was presumably readily available, so although they differ in style, the knowledge of how to create and use such ancient technology had clearly been the work of the same civilization. The pyramids of Uymir, for example, are six rectangular pyramids you would more than likely have never heard of and most certainly would not have been taught of their existence by modern mainstream academia. Built from lava stone without the use of mortar, they are uncannily reminiscent of many structures within the South Americas. They are located in the districts of Chacona, part of the town of Uymer, on the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands, Spain. The structures have been attempted to be dismissed as nothing but 19th century buildings, argued as the byproduct of contemporary agricultural techniques. Yet their infamous shape and the signature building techniques incorporated into said structures are undeniably found elsewhere on Earth. Other pyramids employing the same methods and materials of construction can be found in various sites on Tenerife. In Uymer itself, there were nine pyramids, any yet, regardless of academics attesting to them being no more than a century old. Only six of the pyramids survive to this day. In 1990, adventurer and publisher Thor Heyerdahl became aware of the Canarian pyramids by reading an article written by Francisco Pedron in the Tenerife newspaper Dario de Avisos, detailing the quote, real pyramids of the Canaries. As Heyerdahl had hypothesized a transatlantic link between Egypt and Central America, which is a subtle way of saying a now lost yet once global superpower who once ruled the waves, he became intrigued by the Uymer pyramids and relocated to Tenerife. Heyerdahl hypothesized that the Canarian pyramids formed a temporal and geographical stopping point on voyages between ancient Egypt and the so-called Mayan civilization's ruins, a claim we agree with. Yet we posit that this contact was not between the Egyptians and Mayans, but was one and the same force, a far older, now lost, world-conquering civilization, an ingenious group who not only passed on their wisdom to every corner of the world, but even built in ways we are yet to understand. Unexplainable anomalies litter many ancient ruins to this day. Heyerdahl had predictably initiated a controversy with historians, esoterics, archaeologists, astronomers. Most of mainstream academia staunchly oppose such claims. By suggesting such an hypothesis, which flies in the face of already established paradigms, his research was predictably never pursued further than Heyerdahl personally took it. Yet I feel he succeeded in publishing a ruthlessly honest opinion in regards to the ruins, regardless of what was already apparently established as fact. And along with our research within Bosda Caves, and the similarities, differentiations, and other investigative strategies utilized to support such an argument of a now-lost world-going super-civilization, we feel the evidence for our case is now all but overwhelming. There are far too many connecting factors to simply claim coincidence, and as the proof of this past civilization's capabilities becomes more apparent and in turn researched, the closer we become to finally finding these now lost ancestors. It is a pursuit for the truth, 
which we find highly compelling. The Great Pyramids of Giza – undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed. These blocks, initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes, while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts an unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? That all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan, is the largest pyramid concentration in Southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tucumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities, which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tucumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chankay River a perfect strategic location for a once flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions.
As with many of the other controversial ancient sites, which can be found all over the world, the Pyramid of Gaimar on the island of Tenerife was initially scoffed at by archaeologists and academic authorities alike. When a local newspaper published an article claiming to have discovered an actual ancient steppe pyramid upon the island, it was quickly dismissed as ludicrous and said to have been based upon no physical evidential logic whatsoever, with funded institutes arguing that the claims had been made mistakenly upon agricultural stone terraces commonly found throughout the Canaries. However, thanks to Norwegian ethnographer Thor Heyerdahl, who upon investigating the site himself, now knows for a certainty that not only one pyramid does indeed exist on the island, but there is, in fact, six of them. Thor, who had extensively researched the pyramids of Tukumi, a site we recently covered within Peru, was initially intrigued by the photographs of the site, and upon visiting the valley, concluded that these structures were neither terraces nor random piles of stones cleared by the Spaniards, as some have tried to explain them away as. He attested that they were, in fact, painstakingly built steppe pyramids, constructed according to similar principles to those found within the ancient pyramids of Mexico, Peru, and ancient Mesopotamia. In 1991, research by Juan Antonio Belmonte Avalis, Antonio Aparicio Juan, and Cesar Esteban Lopez, researchers of the Canary Institute of Astrophysics, showed that the long sides of some of the terrace structures at Gaimar align with the direction of both solstices. The main limiting wall points to the sunset in the summer solstice, and the pyramids have stairs on their western side which face the direction of the rising sun on the winter solstice. Although the structures have been dated to within the last few centuries, the question remains unanswered. Just who built them? Or indeed, why they built them? remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, if they are indeed recent constructions, why do they share similarities with extremely ancient pyramidal structures found elsewhere on our planet? Undoubtedly an incredible sight, one which receives very little attention, yet is clearly of historical importance. Such ignorance towards said sites is always highly compelling. Robert Benfer a professor at the University of Missouri mainly focuses on biological anthropology. However, surprisingly, Robert may be solely responsible for revealing to the world what must be one of the most unusual ancient pyramids ever found on Earth. He had previously found a series of earthworks shaped to resemble orcas, condors, and other animals found dotted around the coastal valleys of Peru. He was looking for more of these peculiar mounds within the valleys north of Lima when he spotted what was initially presumed to be nothing more than a natural volcano, a formation with a crater in the center of the top. However, astonishingly, after closer investigations, Benford discovered that this mound was actually a man-made pyramid, all overgrown and resting in the forests of Peru. Curiously, for some reason within 60s, Professional archaeologists employed by the Peruvian government had already realized that this particularly strange-looking volcano-like mound was indeed an artificial pyramid. But for some reason, this official analysis and subsequent discovery had been quietly buried within the academic archives within Peru. Intrigued by this, Benfer and his team decided to investigate further. As the researchers report in the latest issue of the journal Antiquity, they have dug explorative trenches into the inner crater of the volcano and found a collapsed stairwell that descended below through a layer of very old brickwork to a mud plaster floor. Although it seems that this mysterious underground layer had been inhabited by more recent people, the reason for this more modern invasion was more than likely due to the unusual celestial activities witnessed within the area in the 16th century. A total of four solar eclipses would have been visible from El Volcan in short succession. In AD 1521, 1538, 1539, and 1543. This of course being an extremely rare occurrence. Of course, this could have been the reason for the pyramid's initial construction, though the site clearly shows strong indications of being far older than this event. Regardless, profound questions arise from such a curious construction. For instance, if this was indeed a sacrificial mound, 
why was the top built to be concave? This obviously obscuring all those surrounding the building from seeing any sacrificial bloodletting. Benfer also noted that there are no volcanoes around El Volcan that would have served as models for its construction. No other structures like it have been found in Peru or indeed anywhere else on Earth. He will continue to explore the mysterious structure in the hope of possibly discovering artifacts which could shed light on the pyramid's true antiquity. This is clearly one very weird pyramid and a perplexing mystery to history.